Hi, my name is Tomas, and you're watching Casual DIY Channel. In today's video, some basics about a table saw, how it's built, and how to use it safely. Check out the video. So what can you actually do with a table saw? You can do rip cuts. You can do cross cuts. And you can do some bevel cuts. So all the basics are covered by this tool. Let's talk about how the machine is actually built. So on top, that's the tabletop of the machine, which will support your work as you are pushing it through the blade. In the middle of the table, you can see a throat plate. So what that does, it gives you access to your blade and to your riving knife. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Right, so that's the blade, but how is it attached to the saw itself? Just over here, that's a nut that's uh, pressing on the flange and making sure that the blade is securely positioned on the saw itself, on the arbor. I'm just gonna take it off, because usually when you buy your new saw, you have to install the blade yourself. So in my case, I've got two keys that came with this saw, and I'm just gonna remove the blade now. Obviously, when changing the blade, make sure that your saw is unplugged from the mains. And inside there, I hope you can see it, that's the arbor that is housing the blade itself. And now it's time to put the blade back in. Always make sure that the teeth of the blade are facing downwards, okay, to the front of the machine. Usually you will have an arrow indicating which way the blade is spinning. So it's spinning like this and we need to make sure that the uh, blades are heading to the front down to the machine. So now we're going to put the blade back on the arbor. Install the flange. And secure it with the nut. First of all, just hand tighten it a bit and check if the blade is moving freely and if it's steady enough. Sometimes it's easy to get the blade on the arbor incorrectly, so just make sure uh, the blade is spinning correctly. Make sure it's not touching the riving knife as that would cause a lot of issues for you. And when you're happy with it, just tighten the bolt. And with the blade back on, we need to put back the clearance plate. Always need to be running the machine with the clearance plate, with the throat plate installed in the machine. One of the most important safety features on your table saw will be the riving knife, the piece of metal that's behind uh, the blade itself. As you are pushing your material through your blade, making the cut, the riving knife makes sure that and um, the material that you are cutting will not bind on the saw itself. So as you're making the cut, it's what tends to happen if you don't have a riving knife, the two pieces may lock together on the back end of the blade. And that is super dangerous and will lead to kickback. And what is a kickback? That's one of the most dangerous things that can happen on a table saw. Basically, as you are making the cut, the blade can catch on the piece of wood, spin it around and shoot back at you, causing some serious 
injuries and that's what you want to avoid. Hence the riving knife always needs to be used. I would never recommend a saw using a saw without a riving knife and personally I have never used a table saw without the riving knife. It's a fantastic safety feature that can save you from some serious injuries. On top of it, usually the riving knife is also a house for a blade guard, similar to this one. So what does it do exactly? I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to install the blade guard. And as the name suggests, it's actually covering the blade, making sure that your fingers will not get too close to the blade and obviously cause some injuries. So as you are pushing your material through, the blade guard will rise slightly and then you can just make your cut just like so. On top of it, some of them have got an actually an ability to attach a hose for a dust extraction as well. Now, as you will notice on my videos, I actually don't use my blade guard. And that's for two reasons. First of all, I want you to see what's happening exactly on my videos. And secondly, it's my own preference, my own choice. However, if you are beginning your adventure with woodworking or DIY, and you've got your first table saw, please use this. It may save your fingers. It is a very good safety feature. It's my personal choice not to use this. However, I would never ever suggest anybody not to use it. The more safety features you've got, the bigger chances that these will stay attached to your hand. The next really important feature is a rib fence that comes with your saws. Now, I'm actually quite fortunate. My saw is a budget one, however, it actually clamps from the front and from the back. In most cases, in the really ultra budget um, saws, you will only get fences that are locked at the front and they probably end somewhere over here and they don't have that locking uh, mechanism at the back as well and those I do not recommend. If you want to pick up a saw, if you before your purchase, try to find a saw that will actually lock from the front and from the back as well. They're far, far more stable that way and it, you will get better result and they are just basically safer to use. So for example, I want to cut this chipboard more or less in half, let's say 10 centimeter strip. So what I would do, uh, you've got two choices here, okay? You can use the uh, scales that are located on uh, the front of your saw, but to be honest, I never do that. I don't trust that. So I measured the distance between my fence and the blade itself. But very important thing to note here, the teeth of the blade usually go like so. And you need to make sure if this is the piece that you're gonna be saving, okay? So that's on this side, always have the off cut. On this side, that's your workpiece. That's what you're gonna be using for your project. As you need to remember that the thickness of the blade, the curve, usually depending on the blade, but it's about two millimeters. So if you measure wrongly and you take the off cut, then you're gonna be short on your project by two millimeters. So it's important to measure uh, to one of the teeth that is sticking out, okay? So that's very important, otherwise you will be short a little bit. Just like so, make the measurement, then lock the fence and now you set up. Another very important thing is how high the blade should be with correlation to your material. So I always put the piece of work, for me is this melamine board, against uh, the blade itself and I lower it until it's just slightly over uh, the thickness of the board, okay? So something like that, maybe just a little bit less. And the reason for that is mainly safety, okay? The less of the teeth, the less of the blade is um, going above your workpiece, the less chance there is that you're gonna hurt yourself while using it. 
and with that it's actually easier to operate um, the cut as well as you can use quite easily a push stick or a gripper anything like that it's just easier to control your workpiece and um, see what is actually happening on your table so another super important uh, thing is to keep your hands away from the blade and when you're pushing your material through and for that for example you've got a push stick like that they come in many sizes and many shapes and um, you know most of the cases you will actually get a push stick with your saw however you can also buy these uh, um, grippers and this is actually a a cheap chinese version of the gripper that you can get um, so i definitely recommend this i'm not sponsored or anything like that it, it, it's a fantastic thing to have however with a normal push stick you will be just fine as well most importantly make sure your fingers are away from the blade so very important thing never ever stand behind your workpiece in front of the blade as in the worst case scenario if the kickback happens it will straight go into you always stand on the side of the blade for example for me in this setup is the left hand side that's the best position for me and how do you actually uh, push this piece through this hand the left hand is pushing against the fence and as you are looking at your piece you don't look at the blade itself you should be looking at the fence here making sure that your workpiece is butt against the fence itself it's not steering away left or right you need to apply some force making sure it's going straight riding against that fence and that's the line you need to be focusing on your right hand side is pushing the material through and as you get closer to your blade you stop there uh, still applying the pressure from the uh, left hand side use your push stick and just push the material through So when you're ready uh, before your cut make sure on the table of the saw there is no clutter the only thing you can have to hand are the the push stick or the gripper or anything like that and i've got another tip for you uh, and this one i would suggest using with any power tools that require you to cut something always try to imagine or practice your cut before doing it think about the position you're going to be standing how you're going to be standing where your hands going to be where your push stick is how can you reach it and if you are ready to make the cut itself it's really important to just visualize how the cut's going to go and remember if you've got a feeling that there's something wrong 99% of the cases there is something wrong and you should be avoiding uh, that setup so make sure you're comfortable make sure you've got control of the material and just have a think how the cut's going to go also one more thing that I want to mention to you if your mind is starting to wander away from what you're doing uh, so you're starting to lose focus on the cut itself or you've got many boards you're cutting and your mind is wandering away stop stop turn the saw off go outside grab some fresh air maybe make yourself a coffee anything like that the last thing you want is to lose focus on what you're doing a table saw can be very dangerous tool you shouldn't be afraid of it but you need to have respect for it so always be focused on what you're doing that blade is spinning really really fast and only a second of distraction may cause you some injuries so always have that focus on what you're doing on the tabletop of your saw you'll have some miter slots uh, always two on each side of the blade okay now <laughs> quite often with the uh, cheap versions with the cheap saws the miter gauge is absolutely rubbish hence i made my own and 
The fence, as you can see, it's a lot larger and I have got no play with the plastic runner I've installed. With the old ones, the play in this miter slot was absolutely horrendous and you could not make an accurate cut. Now with this, as you can see, I've got a zero clearance over here and for 45 as well for straight cut and for 45 that allows me to have a very good results on making cross cuts as especially on plywood that's very important to have and you just push your material through never use a fence with a miter gauge together okay you use one or the other why is that so for example if you want to use your miter gauge and use the fence as an indicator how long your piece needs to be if you are pushing at your miter gauge with your piece on the blade itself that piece there that's currently being supported by the fence and the miter gauge what's going to happen it could bind between the blade and the fence itself so you need to make sure the fence is away and the piece got free movement, it's got some space between the blade and the fence uh, so it will not bind between them. And there's one thing I would definitely recommend you to make. It's a sled for a table saw. So uh, the blade comes right in the middle here and in my case it's 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 a large one okay it gives me a lot of scope i've got t-tracks here on the main table so it gives me the ability to clamp my workpiece but it's a cross cut sled so if i've got larger pieces bigger panels i can actually tackle with that but also if i've got smaller pieces that i want to cut it's ever so safe to do it on a cross cut sled especially with the t-tracks i can clamp the smaller pieces uh, to the sled itself and just make the cut it's definitely a far better solution than the miter gauge itself and um, it doesn't give you the ability to do a miter cut but a cross cut is absolutely fantastic and this sled is the most used jig in my workshop Okay, let's have a look at the front of the machine. Obviously, you've got your on and off switch. Uh, make sure that you know how to switch the machine very, very quickly in case of anything's going wrong. So, uh, you know, practice few times pressing that emergency stop so you know exactly how to use it. That wheel here, in my particular case, it will um, lower the blade and obviously you can take it higher as well, depending which direction you spin. On top of that, as mentioned before, uh, with table saws, you can cut some bevels, okay? In my case, I've got the lever here. If I release that, I can then tilt the blade uh, to any degrees between uh, obviously the 90 and 45. If you want to set up your blades to 45 degrees and obviously, uh, you know, you're going to have some indicators on your table. So, however, I would not really trust them. The best way for me, at least from my experience, is to get a digital angle reader. It's ever so easy to use um, and, you know, you're going to have a clear uh, picture of what degree you're currently on uh, is just so easy to use and obviously uh, you know when you want your 90s as well just have a look and you know it's ever so important to have the blade correctly set up at the uh, position that you want so you can get absolute accurate results now one of the most important things before you start um, actually using your saw is to make sure the saw is set up correctly, i.e. the blade is 90 degrees to the table, the blade is parallel to your miter slots, uh, to your fence as well, so it's very important to have a table saw that is set up correctly. And I've got you covered as well, I made a whole video on how to set up your table saw to get accurate cuts and most importantly safe cuts. 
I will put a link to that video in the description uh, down below so you can have a look yourself and make sure that your saw is correctly set up. And please remember to use some safety equipment like the hearing protection and eye protection. What not to do with a table saw? Do not ever try to make a cut freehand. You got a fence for that, you got a miter gauge for that, or even a table sled. Never ever try to do a freehand cut on a table saw, as it will move and shift as you are pushing the wood through. It may bind on the blade, and yes, you guessed it, you're gonna get a nasty kickback. Never try to cut a board that is wider uh, than longer um, on your fence. For that, use your miter gauge or the sled. You know, if you do that, again, you're introducing that potential of movement of the board and binding the board on the blade itself, causing kickback. Now that's all the basic information I wanted to share with you today and I hope it was informative to you and now instead of fearing uh, the saw itself you actually got respect for it and knowledge to use it correctly and safely. If you enjoyed today's video drop me that like button down below and please consider subscribing to my channel as there will be more videos coming um, with regards how to use a table saw, best ways to use a table saw. We're going to have some videos about blades, uh, what are the differences and which one to use for a specific tasks. So make sure to subscribe to my channel. But for now guys, that's all. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Take care.